Hello everyone, we are the Kintai family and we are the Unintentional Tour Guides. Today we will be checking out some of the history in our backyard here in Western Pennsylvania. If you'd like to check out any of these places that we are showing you today, check down in the description box below. We have all of the websites down there for you to see. We took the traditional tour of Laurel Caverns whenever we went up. This is a guided tour that is roughly 55 minutes long. They take you through the caverns and tell you about the history of them, as well as a lot of the formations and the geography. They tell you a lot about how the cave is put together itself. Some things you need to know if you're interested in doing the traditional tour of Laurel Caverns. Number one, it is constantly a balmy 52 degrees inside of the caverns. So make sure you either have a jacket or a sweater with you because it is cool while you're in there. Number two, wear comfortable shoes. You will be walking a lot. There's almost a mile of walking in tr the traditional tour um, and something like 17 stories of staircases and slanted hillsides. So you definitely want to make sure your shoes that you are wearing are comfortable. Number three, there are a lot of steep slopes, low hanging rocks, and tight spaces on this tour. If you are rather tall, like Ian is 5'10", um, you will have some issues. Ian had to duck quite a bit. There's a lot of low hanging rocks. Also, if you have issues going through tight squeezes, be aware of that. They are part of the tour. The tour is pretty neat, however, you get a chance to go in there and do it. Laurel Caverns are not what you would typically consider whenever you think of more touristy caves. They're mostly made out of sandstone, meaning that they have very few, and the few that they have are very small, stalactites and stalagmites. Um, what you see mostly in the caves are large sculpture-like rocks that they actually backlight for the tour with these beautiful colored lights. And it really is interesting to see because it is so different. top of the traditional cavern tour that we took, they do offer many different things at Laurel Caverns. They offer a modified tour for those who uh, wish to take that. It bypasses the two steepest slopes that they take you on the traditional tour to create a fairly level 30 minute tour for those who have issues with great depth changes as well as steep slopes or staircases. According to Laurel Caverns website, the general rule that they follow is if walking up five flights of steps is challenging, the modified tour is the recommended tour for you. Apart from the tour length and the fact that it is bypassing those two steep passages, this tour is exactly the same. They also have a mini pup pup course up at the Laurel Caverns. The pup pup course is designed to look like the caverns as you play, which is pretty neat. They also have a panning for gems activity that you can partake in should you choose to. There is a beautiful outlook that is outside their building. You can go out there and on a clear day see five different counties in western Pennsylvania. It is a gorgeous view. And on a nice clear day you can even see the skyline of Pittsburgh. To give you an idea, that is 70 miles away and you can see it clear as day on a completely clear day. For those of you looking for more adventure whenever you go up to Laurel Caverns, they offer rappelling in the caves. And true cavers who like to go spelunking, they do offer spelunking in the deeper parts of the cave. Laurel Caverns, it's only 11 miles to Fort Necessity. This is a good day trip, starting at the caverns and going out to the other three historical sites or doing that exact same thing in reverse. They are the perfect distance apart to make a day of visiting all of these historical sites. The Battle of Fort Necessity in the summer of 1754 was the opening battle of the French and Indian War. The fort was established in what young George Washington called the Great Meadow. It was an open field surrounded by dense forest. Now, it really wasn't a great place for a fort, but that's where he picked, so be it. Then, he had a slight incursion with a French unit in the woods a little bit later. Who shot first is still under debate to this day, but either way, the leading figure of the French forces were killed, angering the French. On July 3rd, a large number of French Native Americans, numbering 700 total men, positioned themselves in the dense woods surrounding the edges of this meadow and began to assault Fort Necessity. All day it poured down rain and bullets. Near 8 p.m., the French offered a truce and were willing to work with Washington for his surrender terms. 
By midnight, Washington had signed a document written in French, a language he could not read nor understand, admitting that he assassinated the French commanding officer and taking all responsibility for starting the French and Indian War. When you go and visit Fort Necessity, there is a visitor center that you can go and check out absolutely free. There is a short film that you can go in and it introduces you to the French and Indian War, the role that Fort Necessity played, and tells you a little bit about the other things that are there outside of just Fort Necessity. There also is a little museum with all sorts of artifacts they've uncovered over the year from the old fort that you can walk through. And again, they have history about the other things around the area that I'll be showing you a little bit later on in this video. Now you can exit the museum then and there is a playground for children that kind of looks like the fort, which is pretty cute. You also can continue walking and you will see the fort itself. You walk straight up into the Great Meadow and they have a replica of the original Fort Necessity there. You can walk right up to it if you choose to. If you'd like to take a tour or learn more information as you go, there are placards lining the walkway and you can stop at them and they are for a cell phone tour. You call the number and you press a couple of numbers and the buttons and you can actually get a tour through your cell phone of Fort Necessity. So if you're interested in that, that is an option that you can take as well. George Washington was a big proponent for a national road system. He knew it would be necessary for the survival of our nation, so he proposed that they use the old Forbes Road that he actually helped build to become a national road, which it is today. This tavern, Washington's Tavern, was the first building of substance along this new road. The tavern itself is small and it has shared bedrooms. Many families would share the same room and people would come and go at all hours of the day. Today you can walk from Fort Necessity up to Washington's Tavern. It's about a half a mile walk along a beautiful woodland path. It is a little bit uphill though. Um, you can drive there as well from the fort. It's maybe a three minute drive, but if the weather's nice uh, and you are able to walk up this incline, I do recommend it. It is very nice. It's a nice walk to go up there. And then when you go up there, you can walk inside, see all the accommodations, see what it used to be like. Um, and you can walk the first floor and the second floor. The only floor you cannot visit is the attic right now. When General Braddock passed away in combat, the British were right in the thick of the French and Indian War. His men did not wish for their general's body to be desecrated by Native Americans, as many fallen soldiers had been. So they buried his body in the road that they were currently building, which is Forbes Road, by the way. And as they were finishing up, they actually had the whole force march over his grave to hide it from anybody who would come looking for it. Whenever this road went to be paved to become a national road, they pulled up what they believed to be his remains and moved him, so and gave him a proper grave. This grave site here is less than five minutes down the road from Fort Necessity and Washington's Tavern, and it's nice to just go and check out. The National Road is a scenic 90-mile corridor that cuts across Pennsylvania. In 1806, President Thomas Jefferson signed legislation establishing the National Highway. Construction of the National Road began in 1811 and went through the mid-1830s. Road construction began in Cumberland, Maryland. The federal government then transferred ownership of the National Road to the states that should pass through in the late 1830s after the construction was completed. The National Road soon became known as the National Pike, as some of the states erected tool houses to collect fees from those using the pike. In order to create revenue for maintenance purposes, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania constructed toll houses along its mine 90 miles segment. There is a small section of the original road still visible today when you visit Braddock's grave, as the road he was buried under is what eventually became the National Pike. Now these little white signs sticking out of the ground are nothing to go out of your way to see. These are in New Alexandria here in Westmoreland County in PA. Now you see their main street used to be right here through this area, which is today a park. These signs are where the old buildings used to sit on Main Street. Today, this is Main Street. We wanted to show you this because everyone has some sort of history around them. Whether it's the site of a major battle or event, or maybe, just maybe, you have a historical train station in your town, or Main Street was moved, like this example here. We are living in a world steeped in history, big and small. So go out there, take a look around, because there is history in all of our backyards.
Well, that's it for this trip. Don't forget, if you liked this video, to hit that thumbs up button and click the subscribe button to see more of our content. And hey, comment below and tell us what history is in your backyard. And until next time, guys, happy travels.